Alveoli have a tendency to collapse. And why do they have a tendency to collapse? What is the pressure driving them to collapse? Well, it's because these alveoli, we're going to say this is alveoli. It's lined by fluid. And this fluid is attracted to each other. So this fluid wants to be as close as possible to each other. So what, what is it going to do? It's going to collapse in on itself and it's, it's going to make as tight of a sphere as possible. And the pressure, the collapsing pressure here is going to be defined by this equation right here. This is Laplace's law. It's 2 times the surface tension, but basically how much they're attracted to each other over the radius. So as you can see, basically, if the radius is smaller, you see the collapsing pressure gets even bigger. As you can see here, this bigger arrows means bigger collapsing pressure. Okay, because of a smaller radius. So as you can see, the smaller and like the more you collapse it, the more the higher pressure there is to collapse it too. Okay, so this is a big problem because you want your alveoli to open up to get a bunch of air to pass through it. Okay, you need it to be bigger. That's why you, when you, when you inhale, you're you're opening up your alveoli. But if you have this too much you have too much collapsing pressure, that's not going to happen. So the way we're going to allow this to happen is through the presence of surfactant. Okay, and how does surfactant help us? So I've drawn surfactant in this yellow. What surfactant does is it breaks up, it breaks up the attracting force between the fluid lining the alveoli. So think of it as like kind of dotting it in. And so like the the, let's say let what do you think of like let's say you have like you're in high school and you have like two kids you have all your your teacher and all your kids are like flirting with each other and it's kind of annoying, right? Because they're talking, they're flirting, they're passing notes. So what do you do? You see, you move the kids around. You put kids in between the, the flirting couples. And so you've decreased the attracting and disturbance that, that there was in the classroom. That's what this surfactant is, okay? Okay. And how does the surfactant do this? Surfactant is basically made of a bunch of phospholipids, okay? So it's, you see, and phospholipids don't mix with these, this fluid stuff. So that's how it works. So now you have decreased the collapsing pressure thanks to this surfactant. And so now your alveoli can stay open for respiration. And it makes your alveoli just open up easier, um, increases lung compliance. So that, that's good. So we see here that this collapsing pressure has decreased thanks to surfactant. Now, we again, as we see, surfactant is very important. And so you need enough of it for lung maturity and lung function. So what happens is the fetus is gonna is slowly making its surfactant. It's not it's not there already. The fetus has to make it, and it sharply increases its production at thirty weeks. Now we can follow this surfactant production with the lecithin spingomyelin ratio. First of all, we want to follow this because we want to know when the baby's lung lung function is mature, and we want to know basically when when it can be out in the world and breathing on its own. And so what is this le lecithin spingomyelin ratio? These are both phospholipids. Remember I told you that surfactant is also made of a bunch of phospholipids. And this leth leth lecithin is one of the major components of surfactant. Okay? It's also called phosphatidylcholine. Sphingomyelin also makes part of lecithin of surfactant, but it's also found in many other things. So we're going to measure the, the ratio of lecithin and sphingomyelin in the amno amniotic fluid. And when that ratio is greater than 2 to 1, that's when we know that the, the, lung, the fetal lungs are mature. That's because the more surfactant you produce, the more this lecithin goes up. But the sphingomyelin stays the same, okay? So as your lungs mature, this ratio increases. And once this ratio exceeds 2 to 1, that's when you know the baby's lung is mature. However, if the baby is born prematurely before adequate surfactant is being produced, the baby is going to be at risk of having neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. I want to talk more all about this, but you can already kind of figure out why this is a problem because if you don't have enough surfactant, your alveoli don't open, your alveoli don't open, you're not getting enough gas exchange, so you're going to have problems. So now, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, NRDS. The problem here is insuff insufficient surfactant in the fe fetal alveoli leading to alveolar collapse. We can also call this atelectasis, okay? The risk factors here are a couple. Premature birth is obvious because you haven't made enough surfactant. Maternal diabetes, and the reason for this 
is because insulin decreases surfactant production. And in maternal diabetes, um, you get too much insulin because you have all that glucose. So you have extra insulin, you're going to decrease surfactant production. Insulin is not working very well, but there's going to be a lot of it. It's not working well on the mother, but it's going to be a lot of it. It's going to work on the baby. It's going to decrease their surfactant production. Finally, C-section. The reason for this is because during a normal vaginal birth, you're going to stimulate steroid production, which stimulates surfactant production. Um, because it's a bunch of stress, because it's stress-induced steroids from a vaginal delivery. If you do a C-section, there is no stress to the baby. So the baby is not going to make any stress-induced steroids. So they're not going to make enough surfactant, and so they're at risk for this neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. Clinical features here. One, you're going to have C respiratory distress. You can re It's already figured out. It's kind of obvious. And what does that mean? What do we mean by respiratory distress? Basically, it means that babies are having a lot of trouble breathing. So they're breathing really fast. They're making a lot of sounds. They're grunting. They're looking a little blue. That's respiratory distress. Okay. The other thing you can see is a ground glass appearance on x-ray, and that's from alveolar collapse. Now, the way you treat this is a couple ways. One, you give the mother steroids before birth. What do we, why would we do that? What do we say about steroids? Remember we said that steroids help induce, stimulate surfactant production, okay? So you give it to the mother, steroids go over to the, the baby, and then the baby will make a little bit more surfactant. If you, so this is, um, the way you, you would do this if you suspect that the mother's gonna have a premature delivery, okay? The other thing you could do is if the baby's, given birth, it's come out, and he develops neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, you can give exogenous surfactant to the infant. You can also give supplemental O2 just to help them. They're having a lot of trouble breathing, so you give them extra O2. However, this O2 cannot have its own complications, okay? High levels of oxygen can lead to retinopathy of prematurity and bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So retinopathy of prematurity arises because you just have too much oxygen, and oxygen makes all these free radicals. It's going to die, damage the eye. You have eye damage, and you can lead to blindness. Okay, And then bronchopulmonary dysplasia is basically damage to the lungs from high levels of oxygen. So that's it for our surface tension, surfactant, and neonatal respiratory distress syndrome overview.